Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome back to Clutch Chess International 2020 and again Alexander Grishuk versus Levon Aronian. Uh, and I just show you the game where Alexander Grishuk had to win as white if he wanted to continue uh, to play in the tournament. He did it, he did it. I show you that game if you haven't seen that, check it before watching this game. Just this is the continuation and now Levon Aronian gonna play as white and he has no choice he has to win this game he cannot draw he has to win so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Levon Aronian opens with e4 we have c5 Sicilian defense on the board knight on f3 and now d6 and here not d4 this is the most popular move not bishop on b5 which was played already a couple of times in this tournament but knight on c3 so Levon Aronian goes for some the sideline uh, as he has to win the game. Uh, knight on f6, d4, and now c takes on d4, and again, not knight on d4, but queen on d4. Okay, this was played by Levon Aronian, uh, and now we have knight on c6, and again, not bishop on b5, which is the most popular here. So this is actually the sideline of the sideline of the sideline. Uh, we have queen on e3, queen on e3 by Levon Aronian, and this position position actually was reached a couple of times uh, and black played just you know some harmonious moves like g6 like e6 just to develop the bishop uh, castle also a6 was the idea uh, with the you know uh, following b with b5 and developing the light square bishop this all of this were was played already uh, however Alexander Grishu goes for d5 and d5 he said in the interview after the game that these moves just look very very ugly and he was not sure uh, it was for this variation or maybe some other uh, but he definitely studied that and uh, and he played d5 now uh, what to play as white so for example if white tries to exchange that's not so great after exchanging the knights the queen is in the center e5 is coming the bishops can develop pretty easily and white don't really have the edge you know to uh, to win that game and just reminder uh, white has to win uh, and also if if white gonna push this is even worse because after d4 the queen is under attack the knight is under attack so queen on d2 now d takes on c3 and after exchanging the queens which is uh, just forced knight takes on d5 uh, e takes on f6 and after exchanging uh, more pawns g takes on f6 and look at this black have one extra pawn yes the pawn structure is not that great but without the queens everything is fine with this position white also has this weak pawns uh, on the queen side so definitely it's a pretty good position for black with one extra pawn shouldn't have the problem with draw probably black even can try to win so bishop on b5 main idea here this was played by levon aronian we have knight on e4 and now before taking knight on e4 uh, we have knight on d4 and now black have to be very careful because this knight is pinned okay and it's attacked twice so black cannot you know just play knight on c3 because knight c6 and what to what now the queen is under attack okay if black takes the knight the problem is bishop on c6 and now this is beautiful fork on the on the rook so bishop on d7 bishop on a8 and now yes knight e4 black can retreat and yes white even cannot take on d5 because queen a5 uh, would win back the material and uh, and black would stand pretty good however queen e7 controlling e5 and everything is fine okay uh, let's say e6 and white have extra pawn and extra exchange so definitely very easy also black still have the king in the center uh, and white can very easy castle so uh, definitely have to be very careful here also um, queen on d6 if you ask what would happen if queen on d6 this also doesn't work queen on c3 and now let's say a6 attacking the bishop because uh, that's gonna be some discovery here with the knight uh, but it's still discovery knight d4 this is enough to win okay a takes on b5 
knight b5 with the attack on the queen, with the attack on c7, and white just gonna win the rook. Because rook cannot be defended, queen cannot go, uh, for example, to a6 to defend because that would be the, you know, family fork even worse. So uh, definitely this position, uh, black have to play bishop on d7. This was move played by Alexander Grishuk and only now a knight on e4. We have d takes on e4 uh, and now again white cannot just castle because there are tactics here okay if white castle the problem is knight on d4 knight on d4 attacking the bishop twice okay so uh the knight cannot be taken because bishop will be taken and bishop if takes you know on d7 the problem is queen d7 defending the knight and there are no tricks like rook on d1 and, and c3 there are no tricks like that because knight f3 with check uh, and look at this rook the rook is under attack and is undefended so g takes on f3 and now queen d1 king g2 and definitely black is winning that so white of course have to take on c6 we have bishop takes on c6 and now b takes on c6 uh bishop also could take but uh, you know just exchanging more pieces uh and uh, black at least want to have the pair of bishop uh, as you know it's it's always useful especially when you want to at least draw the game we have queen on e4 and now queen a5 with check bishop on d2 and now queen on d5 so this was the plan queen on a5 queen d5 uh, trying to uh, centralize the queen and if white want to exchange the queen then black gonna fix the pawn structure okay this gonna be the pawn structure very solid uh, very easy to play for black so queen retreats to e3 and here in this position what grishuk should play he should just you know grab the space in the center play something like e5 uh, and then after knight on b3 f6 solidify this uh, and uh, position of black king you know after castling uh, is not the problem it's not weakened because white doesn't have the light square bishop to actually uh, attack on the on this diagonal so it's everything very solid this bishop can stay here you know uh, and defend this this diagonal uh, after after castle on the queen side let let's say bishop on f5 and and what to play as white for example bishop on c3 attacking the queen but queen e4 and now there are some mating ideas uh, there is also you know g2 hanging so uh, white would have to probably exchange the queens and this is easy draw for black so uh this could be played by Alexander Grishuk, but he prefers to play c5. So he attacks the knight, knight has to retreat, so we have knight on e2 and now e6. So he want to develop this way, however, he could do with tempo, you know, f6, e5, that would be, you know, he would grab more space and, and th the game would be more solid. However, here we have bishop on c3 and now Levon says, okay, if you develop the bishop, I'm gonna take your pawn on g7, are you interested? Uh, Sasha said, uh, but your pawn on g2 is hanging, should I take it? Uh, Levon by playing bishop on c3 said okay go for it the problem with this move actually uh, is after castle king is still in the center uh, and black achieved nothing with that okay so uh, that would be not really pleasant to play for black so this is why we have bishop on c6 by Grishuk first and here is the problem white cannot castle because queen controls d1 uh, and also cannot castle on the king side because of mating ideas on g2 okay so here is the problem and there is even more problems because if white play any any other moves then uh queen on g2 will be the problem then if white castle then actually black can exchange the queen for two rooks uh, and the and the pawn and this is gonna be much better for black again that would be very difficult to win by white so we have f3 making a space for the king just in the case uh, and also preventing any any queen on g2 ideas and now grishuk uh, shocks levon aronian and play bishop e7 and he says okay now you can take uh 
pawn on g7. But what would happen if actually Levon takes it? Bishop on g7, and believe me or not, but these lines are pretty crazy. Because after a rook on g8, what are the options for, for white? So, for example, rook on d1 with the attack on the queen. Uh, so, queen on c4, attacking c2. Uh, but now, queen h6, defending the, the bishop. Uh, and now, now after queen on c2, king f2, it looks like white found some, you know, uh, place for the king. The problem is f6. f6 and black stands really great here because white gonna have these pieces stuck over there and cannot move. Uh, and what is the problem with taking on f6? You cannot take on f6. The problem is this rook attacks on g2. Look at this. If you take on f6, which looks pretty solid, the problem is rook on g2, king g2, then winning back the material. I mean, this is exchange down, but look now. King has to be moved. King h3, otherwise the rook is also hanging. So king h3, queen f3, and now we have check and attack on the bishop. And now king h4. Bishop takes on f6 with check, the queen controls all the squares around, so white doesn't have a choice, queen f6, and black of course is winning that. So that would be pretty crazy, so uh, you even cannot play something like rook on d1, but if you move the bishop, so for example bishop e5, uh, it's better, it's much better, but it's crazy to even calculate anything. Rook on g2 is of course uh, very normal and now knight f4 and it looks like wow white gonna have a really great game but look at this bishop h4 can come here with attack on the queen bishop also can come this way uh, the open d file is controlled by the king the 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 rook also controls do you see all of that? This is so complicated. So, for example, bishop on h4, king f1, and now not moving the queen, not moving the queen. There is no space for the queen. Rook on g5, rook on g5, pretty crazy stuff. Knight d5, winning the queen, but only temporary. So, bishop b5 now, and look at this. All of this start to make sense, okay? So uh, king cannot move. The only move, uh, you know, uh, still keeping something uh, on the board is queen on d3, winning back the material. And now these two pieces are still attacked. So uh, e takes on d5 and look at this position. Four pawn islands by black. Four pawn islands by white. This is totally, you know, messed up position. Uh, and I don't think anybody would love to play anything like that. Uh, but this is just one of the craziest line. So uh, definitely taking on g7 would be uh, pretty crazy. Knight on f4 with attack on the queen was played. Uh, and now we have queen f5 uh, looking at c2. But also there is uh, one more thing in this position. Because now bishop on g5 can come, uh, pin the knight and then uh, win the knight or, you know, mess up the pawn structure, for example, after after g3 and taking on, on f4. So we have h4 and this also is a very important move uh, anytime you have the, the knights, for example, on f4, on c4, it's always good to move the pawns which protects g4. Uh, then you don't have the attacks, for example, from the pawns. It's it's often used, one of the motives in the French defense, one of the motives in the Karokan defense, and uh, it's good always to know, you know, something like that exists in chess. Uh, we have bishop on d6, so, so the knight is attacked this time now twice, we have knight retreats to e2, and now queen on c2, winning the pawn. Uh, rook on d1, now attacking the bishop, bishop e7, and now knight can go back Back to f4 beautiful outpost for the knight so why not to move the knight to f4 we have castle we have castle and here is the critical position of the game and Sasha Grishuk said uh, in the interview after the game he should go for, you know, bishop on h4 and continue the game, okay? For example, queen on c5 and now rook f on c8 uh, and let's say rook d2 attacking the queen. Queen can retreat to f5. 
this is important queen on f5 attacking the queen attacking the knight and also if the queen is moved for example to d4 with some mating ideas bishop always can retreat to to e6 counter that uh, so white would have to probably just exchange uh, and this position again slightly better for for black there is one extra pawn four pawns against two pawns yes there are some majority on the queen side but it's still better for black uh, so uh, this could be played bishop on h4 this was sasha grishuk was thinking but he played rook f on d8 challenging the rook and now rook is attacked twice uh, but this is very important move because now white have some sequence of moves which will make the position uh, probably winning so uh, feel free to actually pause the video and find the continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea are you ready so the rook is under attack so now the rook has to be moved so rook on c1 kicking the queen and queen this time cannot go to f5 cannot go to f5 because g4 uh, and the queen is trapped okay all the squares are actually controlled uh by some pieces so the queen would be trapped so cannot even go there so queen a4 was played by grishuk and now the star move all of this operation knight on e6 not only winning the pawn but also making the the black position miserable it's like attacking then the, the rook attacking the g7 twice so what to play now uh, rook on d5 let's say the problem is the fork okay attacking both of the rooks so uh black has nothing to do here queen on h4 maybe uh but as i said just winning the exchange uh, and after queen on e5 there is another problem checkmate is coming uh, bishop is under attack and the only move actually you cannot you know move the bishop to f6 because you're gonna lose on d5 so uh, queen on g5 and white can just exchange uh, bishop g5 and being the exchange up should make the life much easier for white it's still you know playing against the pair of bishop but white stands uh, really great here uh, also if trying something else like attacking the knight the knight can jump on g7 uh, and here the bishop is under attack so uh, black would have to defend it somehow for example queen on h4 but now knight f5 okay fork again fork again rook e6 can attack the, the queen however it doesn't help because queen e6 f takes on e6 uh, and you know a, again very similar situation uh, where actually white play with the exchange up okay against pair of bishop but it's still exchange up so it's uh, it's a better position for white so this could be played probably the best in the position would be you know take immediately on h4 and after knight on d4 just rook d8 uh, and yes exchange down but queens are still on the board so that would be the best option for for sasha grishuk however grishuk was very very low on time he couldn't calculate all of that and he played f takes on e6 and this is the problem because now white is winning queen on e6 with check king on f8 and doesn't matter king on h8 is is, is the same move because uh, in the next move we have bishop on g7 and now uh sasha grishuk took the took the bishop but if he even play king on e8 it would not help because rook c on e1 uh, and now checkmate is coming and you cannot do much about that if you try to defend if you try to defend the problem is bishop f6 and now checkmate is coming anyway so queen on f6 queen on f6 uh, and you win the queen uh, somebody would say okay but i have two bishops for the queen i still can try to play actually not because after rook on d7 as both of the bishops are under attack and here is the mating idea so after rook on d7 you're gonna lose this bishop so that's definitely winning so uh after rook on c1 what else you can play uh, something like this checkmate it's just immediate checkmate as this bishop is pinned okay so uh, 
uh, not even this way. This is why Sasha Grishchuk take on g7. Queen on e7, winning back one of the bishops. It's still, you know, uh, black are up in material. However, this position is completely lost. King on g8, and now queen e6, important move, still with check, king h8, and now this queen controls c4. Here is the deal. Rook on c4 now, and now what black can do? If black moves actually the queen somewhere, let's say it's wherever, doesn't really matter, uh, then we're gonna have queen on f6 with check, and this gonna be a checkmate, okay? So this is why after rook on c4, Sasha Grishchuk resigned the game. He could sacrifice the queen, uh, but this position is just hopeless as white gonna have the queen and two pawns, for the rook and the bishop. So uh, that's, you know, unplayable. Sasha Grishchuk understand that. So after rook on c4, he resigned the game. Uh, very beautiful match, especially two clutch games at the end. And uh, Sasha Grishchuk managed to win as white. This was pretty exciting. And now Levon Aronian did the same. What a match, beautiful match. And I would like to show you all the quarterfinals, what just happened. So here we go. Uh, we have Magnus Carlsen who won against Jeffrey Schong and he gonna place against Levon Aronian, who just won against Grishuk. So as you see, uh, Aronian said actually in the interview that he loves to play against Grishuk and Carlsen because they are creative. So it's very, very challenging and they, they play always enjoyable chess. And other pairings, uh, as we know, Wesley so won yesterday and Fabiano Caruana just won against Lenier Dominguez by a very small margin. Lenier Dominguez was a huge surprise. Uh, he fight against Fabiano Caruana, really, really brave. Uh, however, he didn't do that. Caruana is number two in the world uh, and he gonna meet with Wesley. So, so if you want to see other games from this tournament semifinals, press subscribe and tell me in the comment who gonna advance to the semifinals. Magnus Carlsen or maybe Levon Aronian? Uh, Wesley So or maybe Fabiano Caruana. What's your opinion on that? That's very, very interesting. Press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.